off from work to do this, and I was, I had to approach my boss, because this was, a, you know, a professional job. I had my own office on the 38th floor of this building, and, like, looked like a banker, and I was like, I had to approach my boss, and I was like, look, um, here's the deal. I've been given the chance to do something really phenomenal that I've always, been, you know, loved. I'm having a chance to be a part of something. I would really like the permission to do this. I'll use my own vacation time to do it. And they told me then, they're like, okay, but just this one show. By the time we all got laid off, which is another funny story, I was working on, I think, like seven shows. Oh, and God. I finished Sayuki, and they're like, are you still working? I'm like, yeah, it's a really long show. Like, uh, but I used all of my vacation time, which imagine, I had been there for six years, so that's a lot of vacation time. I used all my vacation time, and I was taking do not pay days. The funny thing was, uh, my boss was getting fairly irritated with me because I, I was gone so much and I was having to work till like 1 o'clock in the morning at night to you know, get all my work done. And uh, I was really expecting the whole, okay, you have to decide which job you like better, your real job or your fun job. And I had probably already decided that I was going to choose the fun job anyway. Um, and granted, that's a hard decision to make because that was like a $60,000 a year job to going to be an actor, which is making, you know, roughly what the lady at Walmart makes for saying, you know, welcome to Walmart. So, like, it's a big step down. But it's a big step down. And she gets health insurance. I don't, like, actors don't get health insurance. So, um, I pretty much decided that, and then fate would do something very nice, uh, not for the country, but for me. Um, the law firm that I worked for happened to be the outside counsel for a very large oil and gas company that got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I don't even have to tell you who they are. You probably can say their name. I, I can't say their name, but it rhymes with uh, Wenlong. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so as that became a giant mess, uh, lots of people were laid off. And the funny thing was, I had pretty much already decided I was going to do acting. So when they brought us all in to fire us, or lay us off, whatever they call it, um, I remember them telling me, like, we were going to get three months' worth of pay, like, for not working. We are going to get three weeks of pay without even having to show up at our desks. And we would hold on to our insurance for, like, another four months. And I was like, and I remember everybody around me you know, getting upset and crying and stomping their you know, fists on the desk. And I was just like, <coughs> cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so that was it. And then I started doing this full time. Uh, I blast forward like seven years now. I'm in like almost 150 titles. Uh, I get to travel around the country all the time and meet people that love anime as much as I do. Probably the coolest thing about my job is I get to meet a lot of the Japanese who create the anime. And that's interesting because sometimes that's been a good thing and sometimes that's been a bad thing. Um, but I've had experiences that I would have never had, especially as a fan, you know. As a fan, you're like, I really wish I could meet so-and-so. And then... You know, now, uh, somebody, my coolest Sayuki fanboy moment, somebody brought me something to sign at the last convention I was at, and I'm a huge fan of Minikora. I think it's kind of cool that a grown woman sits around her house and draws hot boys all day. Like, <laughs> if male artists can draw the big ladies, like, why can't a female artist? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> really, really cool that she does that, and that's why I love Minikora. But um, somebody brought me this placard with this drawing of Goku on it with a really familiar Japanese signature. And I was like, is this what I think it is? And she's like, yeah, that's Kaiser Minikura's autograph. And I was like, how did you get that? And I was like, she goes, can you sign right? And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> she wanted me to sign right above Minikura's name. So, like, you know, I still am a geeky fanboy about certain things. Like, I get goofy when I met the creator of Chrono Crusade, which is a really awesome story. Um, I geeked out on him so much that he thought I was, uh, first he thought I was a staff member, and then he thought I was a cosplayer. Because when I showed up at the opening ceremonies, I was dressed as Chrono. So, uh, <coughs> that was so funny. But I just feel really lucky. I've gotten to do a lot of really fun things. Now, uh, I also, and I'm also a DJ. I've been DJing for 26 years. So now I actually get to do that at a lot of conventions that I go to, and I cause a lot of trouble when I do that, and that's fun. I have a lot of stories to tell about that. But um, 
Yeah, so that's who I am. Uh, what kind of questions do you all have? I can tell you all about some new things I'm working on. Some new things I'm working on are still a secret. So, yes, your hand went up first. Um, is Sayuki, has Sayuki been your favorite um, one to ask about? I wouldn't say it's my favorite, and there's two reasons. Um, I love it, and nothing will ever take a place in Sayuki because that's like being asked to be a part of something you love. That would be like you being a huge fan of the Rolling Stones and one day Mick Jagger going, hey, Keith is sick, you know, can you come fill in? Like, that's kind of the way I feel about Sayuki. It's like, I never ever thought I would be a part of anything to do with that. Uh, that being said, it kind of ruined it that I already knew how everything was going to turn out because they'd already seen it. So, uh, two of my favorite shows that I really can't pick which one I like best, one being Chrono Crusade. I, I, Chrono will always be one of my favorite roles and it's a show that will always make me cry and laugh and giggle and it's just a beautiful show I, and part of that I think has to do with the fact that I'm friends with Moriana um, and the other one is Beck because I'm a big music dork and never was there a more rockin' show than Beck and I got to kind of live out two dreams doing Beck because one, I was in a really cool anime show and two, I was the lead singer of a rock band also so that was kind of fun but um, Sayuki is one of those things that nobody will ever be able to take that away from me. And if I, in fact, when they, you know, got the cast to do Reload, um, I could at least rest comfortably because one, I'd gotten to do it first. You know, it's just me and Sushiro. I mean, you know, we were the two original Gokus. And um, I got to be a part of something I really loved. So uh, that being said, there is Sayuki Burial, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe, I always hope that maybe they'll bring the original cast back to do some of the newer Sayuki stuff. So, um, so yeah, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, it always comes down to Evangelion, uh, Evangelion, Chrono Crusade, Beck, and Sayuki are always at the top. Yeah? Um, who's your favorite Japanese person who you've met? Hands down Moriyama. Hands down Daisuke Moriyama. Um, uh, when I first started doing this, I was like most people in the industry, anytime there was a Japanese person in the room, I was like, ah! But what I found is a lot of the Japanese uh, animators specifically were really not friendly, and they were not nice, and they didn't respect anime fans. And so I got really burned out. I got to the point where I almost didn't want to meet the Japanese guests anymore because I had, between the J-Rock fans, which is enough to make you want to jump out of a window, <laughs> yeah. and the animators, I was just like, why am I bothering to tell people I like their work if they don't care? So when I, and, and Pat Dalhanty that runs Anime Boston, who's here, he's actually a panelist, he's the guy that did the Chibi Project panel. Um, he told me, he announced that Moriyama was coming and I almost had a kitten in front of him. <laughs> and originally, now what would have been super cool, they originally wanted Moriyama and Akira Ishida. Which Ishida and I shared three roles together, so I would have died and broken one of my arms to meet Ishida. Yeah. But unfortunately, he had started a new Gundam project and there was no way to do it. But when I met Moriyama, I was so worried that he would be an ugly person uh, and not nice, and it would affect how much I loved Chrono Crusade. And to my really nice surprise, he is probably one of the nicest, friendliest, most humble artists I've ever met in my life. And he is so touched that anyone likes his, his story and his work. And he was just bowled over by American fans. Uh, I'll see a little bit. Oh, there's a seat. Yeah, there's two back here. I'll sit on the floor. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want any, but I'll sit on that thing. I'll sit on the donut table. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, but he was, um, he was so bowled over that American fans liked his work and really, really appreciated fandom. Like, yeah. he really did appreciate fandom. Yeah. And he had my favorite quote I ever heard. I, I finally, I had a moment, like, he totally made me cry because he drew this picture of Chrono for me and wrote to Greg on it. All this it was really nice. And I've got a horrible picture of me because I'm all fat-faced and red where I was crying. But, um, I told him before I said goodbye, I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning to run out and tell him goodbye before he left for Japan because I had such a great time talking to him and, and just getting to know him. And, and his manager, Kato-san, who looked like a little sawed-off J-rocker, he's like this tall. Wait, hang on. Kato is about this tall, but with his hair, he's about that tall. <laughs> <laughs> little J-rock hair. 
But um, in fact, Kato, the funny story about Kato, they took 